If you've spent any time on Twitter in the past week, you have likely come across an ongoing story regarding Joe Rogan trying to facilitate a debate between scientist and vaccine researcher Peter Hotez and anti-vaxxer and presidential candidate RFK Jr. The original tweet is now at 200,000 likes with more subsequent discussion than one could possibly keep up with. There's a lot of blue checkmark anti-vaxxers and Rogan supporters who are egging on Dr. Hotez, who so far has not accepted the offer for a direct one-on-one -on -one debate, though he has said he would come on Rogan's show for a discussion with Rogan. Before talking about why Hotez is correct to decline this invitation, I need to get a few things out of the way. First, this video is not going to talk about the validity of Hotez's and RFK Jr.'s actual claims about vaccines or masks or lockdowns. I'm not directly covering the scientific questions themselves because it would take hours to properly cover and hundreds of hours to properly research, which is partly the point here. Second, and it's frustrating that I need to point this out, but I am not a stooge of the pharmaceutical industry. I have never accepted as much as a free pen from a drug rep. Because of the Physician of Payment Sunshine Act, you can confirm that I receive no money from industry. I do not attend any industry-supported social events for physicians. Regarding my positions during the COVID era, when the evidence in favor of COVID vaccines was strong, I discussed it. When the evidence was not, I discussed that too. When Fauci was claiming that remdesivir was a game changer, my take on the med was much more measured. And when the CDC got excited about convalescent plasma, I talked about why we should not be so excited. So in short, if you're going to post a knee-jerk reaction comment that I'm a farmer shell for even talking about this, for having this opinion about this uh, supposed debate, your comment is getting deleted and you are getting blocked. So go take your trolling elsewhere. Now, with all that out of the way, let me lay out the case why Hotez is right to decline a direct debate with RFK Jr. It all comes down to the fact that despite all the clamoring to the contrary, science is not advanced through direct live one-on-one -on -one debate. People who claim otherwise either know nothing about science or are deliberately misrepresenting the process in order to advance an agenda. But why is that? Why is the realm of science not amenable to conventional debates? To answer that, let's consider how debates normally work. Not formal high school debate team debates, but rather something more like a political debate in which there is less structure. One side presents a particular position on an issue, the other side offers a rebuttal to that position, then the first side offers a rebuttal to the rebuttal, and so on and so forth. Until the moderator either allows the second side to state their position in the affirmative uh, rather than as a rebuttal, or the moderator changes the topic altogether. If the debate is about a well-known policy issue, that can sometimes work because there isn't a lot of data to sift through. The debate is more about convincing someone of your opinion through things like analogy, examples, and rhetoric, rather than doing deep dives on individual studies. But with a data-heavy question, with thousands upon thousands of relevant scientific papers, like we see with vaccine eff uh, effectiveness and safety, if one person brings up some random study from a random journal, in most cases, the other side has not read it, not because they are not a well-read individual, but rather because of the profound volume of the scientific literature. In a real-time debate, it's just not possible for the other side to mount any kind of informed rebuttal to that. And likewise, there is no real-time fact-checking from an objective third party. To do this properly, if one side cited a particular study, the other side would need to spend 20 or 30 minutes reading the full paper, another hour looking through the paper's references to ensure that they, those references support the claims in the paper, and in some cases, it may even include looking at the statistical calculations uh, to ensure they're legit. Only then can that person offer an informed rebuttal to the initial claim that invoked the study in the first place. And all that is assuming that both sides are well-educated scientists experienced in discussing and interpreting the medical literature. If one side 
or in some cases, if both sides are not scientists, and instead of properly studying literature, they throw out one unsupported pseudoscientific claim after another, it's simply not possible to refute them all. And if one tries, that person spends the entire debate on the defensive without ever having the opportunity to present their own case. This is related to something called the bullshit asymmetry principle. The amount of energy or time needed to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude bigger than that needed to produce it. So as a consequence of this, what a debate between Hotez and RFK Jr. would look like is not an informed discussion of one another's claims or an informed discussion of the actual science, but rather at best, each one is dispensing talking points to the other without any true rebuttals on points of fact. And at worst, it means that RFK Jr. is going to be throwing out one absurd claim after another, supported by a mixture of uninformed conjecture, straw men, pseudoscientific myths, and poorly designed, uncontrolled, unblinded studies of 10 people, with Hotez not getting nearly enough time to respond to each in turn. The corollary here is that successful debates are those about policy, where the facts are not in dispute, but rather the issue in question is how one's values or society's values should interact with those facts. Unlike policy debates in the case of vaccine effectiveness or vaccine safety uh, and with mask effectiveness, there is objective truth there. Reasonable people can disagree with what that truth is, but it doesn't change the fact that the truth exists. And finding that truth is a very long process that requires significant expertise. I know Rogan's program can go on for many hours, but a true debate about vaccines could literally last weeks full time. That's how long it would take both sides to be adequately informed of the other's positions and of their cited evidence. There is the issue of Rogan as moderator. I am not a Rogan expert, but from what I've seen of him, you know, and I don't, I don't have any, I don't think anything bad about the guy, but it does seem unlikely he will be able to act as an objective, impartial moderator without periodically interjecting his own opinions, which carry a lot of weight with his audience, yet, which is not really appropriate for a debate moderator to be doing. Then there's the issue of the audience and how is it decided afterwards who won the debate? I'm going to be perfectly frank here. Truly, uh, understanding the scientific evidence for or against vaccines or for or against masks is beyond what the average Joe Rogan listener is capable of. It's beyond what the average person in general is capable of. Physicians and scientists go to school and train for years, sometimes decades, before being able to fully understand the medical and scientific literature within just their own specialized field. Consider myself for a moment. I got a biology degree from MIT a medical degree from NYU, I've been a Stanford professor for many years and a hospitalist for two decades, and I sometimes need help with fully interpreting the literature around vaccines. The idea that some armchair epidemiologist who has never heard of a p-value until COVID can determine the factual accuracy of what Hotez and RFK Jr. would say in a debate is absurd. And it is it's is, it is just disrespectful of our profession when people imply otherwise. This is not about scientists and doctors being up here in our ivory tower, you know, looking down on everyone else below and thinking, oh, you guys are just too stupid uh, to, to possibly understand us. Instead, it's about an acknowledgement of people's individual specific expertise. When I take my car to the mechanic, I don't argue with them about what's wrong because I know far, far less about cars than they do. Likewise, I wouldn't go on Rogan's show and criticize his take on MMA or on podcasting. Even within medicine, I don't argue with colleagues on questions that are well outside the scope of my own clinical practice. For example, I don't tell a cardiothoracic surgeon that they made the incorrect choice of mechanical valve replacement in my patient because I know that they know much more about it than I do. So if the people who would be watching a hypothetical debate between Hotez and RFK Jr. are not able to understand the science, how will they decide who won? Well, the obvious answer is that confirmation bias will assure that viewers will award victory to whoever's position is congruent with their pre-existing beliefs. And that's not just anti-vaxxers declaring victory for RFK, but also the pro-vaccine lay public automatically declaring victory to Hotez. Confirmation bias is not partisan. 
And if a viewer truly was a blank slate on this topic beforehand and had, and, you know, came into this debate watching it with no pre-existing beliefs about it at all, which is pretty unlikely, but if that happened, they'll end up choosing whoever's rhetoric was smoother and better delivered. A lawyer who does that for a living is going to have a huge edge over a scientist here, irrespective of the actual merits of their argument. So in summary, live one-on-one -on -one debates are not an appropriate format for advancing science due to the lack of time available to investigate claims before responding to them. Most people who will be watching such a debate lack the knowledge and skills to determine which presented scientific claims are true. Confirmation bias will lead most of us to choose a victor irrespective of the actual content of the debate. And RFK Jr. will almost certainly be a better debater in the sense of providing more eloquent, convincing rhetoric. In short, the only things gained by a Hotez RFK Jr. debate on vaccines is brief hype for Rogan's show and gasoline for the fire that anti-vax social media trolls have lit in order to roast Hotez. Whether or not Hotez is objectively correct on every relevant scientific issue here, he is definitely correct to decline this debate.